So what's going on, people? 15 people. Cool. Now I can actually start. So this is part three, and it's been about a week since I looked at, uh, started looking at Bob's stuff. I have not uploaded it to YouTube yet. Hopefully you don't know. Uh, I, I do these long form character run throughs take a few hours to like go through each move move my move look at the frame date and all that bullshit And then I upload it to YouTube. I've gone through most of the cast and I'm currently doing Bob uh, And I left off at Basically, I stopped at the wave dash stuff the crouch dash stuff not wave dash, but Gone through every other move. I still got to upload those to the YouTube and one thing I'm noticing, I can tell you guys already, is uh, I mentioned this last time, but yeah, some stuff about Bob got like nerfed, but Bob is still, in my opinion, very usable. I don't know. They took away some of his most bullshit stuff. For example, this move got rendered almost useless. Thank God. Because you don't know, this is the chop down one. This is the move that ruined Tekken 6 Evo <laughs> when uh, there was four Bobs in top eight. And there's a whole lot of this move going on. For those of you don't know, once again, this is uh, in Tekken 6. This was zero on block. Uh, plus whatever on hit and on counter hit and knock down. So we got another free one, basically. If you delay it, I think. Yeah, see? Uh, so basically, this was his poke. This was his main poke. And it was completely BS. Uh, in Tekken 6, he also felt a lot more invasive. Uh, in Tag 2, they nerfed this to be negative on block. And in this game, it seems like they nerfed it further. And now it's negative 11 on block but if you remain standing he recovers crouching so most people aren't going to punish him with anything other than a uh, crouch jab because there aren't any 11 frame mids from standing there's only special mids crouch jab so it's not a big deal unless it's a meter character like geese could do crouch jab quarter circle back one super uh, and elias and akuma could do whatever the hell they do so anyway so this move now the only purpose of that move is uh if you want a safer grounded hitting option than this, because that is also grounded hitting, but it's negative 15 on block. So, but it's more rewarding damage wise. Also, if they happen to match wake up kick, gives you a juggle on counter hit. Another thing I noticed about Bob is uh, a weakness he's always had is that he has he does he's not able to launch in a standing position, not while standing. Standing position, he's not able to launch until 18 frames with that. Uh, maybe something else that I'm not remembering right now. Uh, he has something else. No, that's 20 frames. Uh, what is it? Up three? He has some other flipping kick also that was 18 frames that I can't remember right now. Um, so that's like a, always been a big weakness for Bob, but that never made him a bad character before. <laughs> so whatever. Uh, he has to settle at 16 frames. He has to settle for this. And at 15 frames, he has... Uh, that's 14, actually. At 14 frames, he has that. So that's his in-between for launcher. While standing launching, he's great. He has 14 frames. Unfortunately, he doesn't have much for while standing be, uh, below 14 frames. Faster than 14 frames. He has while standing 4 for 11 frames like most characters. While standing 3 is 17. While standing 1 is 15. So that in-between uh, 11 to 14, he ain't got shit. Uh, he does have full crowd stuff too, right? Yeah, that's 14, but you're going to launch at 14, so it doesn't matter. So... Uh, good things about Bob is he has a shitload of range. Like this, this is a natural combo 15 frame mid, right? It has a ridiculous amount of range. About two and a half back dashes, I think. That's two. Uh, a little over two. One, two. Yeah, see? A little over two. Maybe not two and a half, but a little bit over two back dashes worth of range. And then that also goes into down two, one. A mid mid, um, I think it's negative ten, right? Yeah, negative ten. So Bob's frames are kind of trash, but they always were kind of trash. The way you have to use Bob is you have to use movement around all of his poking. He still has a decent down forward one, but it is negative three, and it is fourteen frame startup. For thirteen frame mid poke, back two is your go to, but it's negative five on block. But then he has back two two, which is natural combo, but it is mid high. <laughs> so. It can it does not jail, so it can't be duck. So, like, Bob has to basically play around with his negative frames, move, and then he, of course, has one of the better backswing blows in the game with back forward one. It almost works like a DP. There are moves that go right through him visually when he does his back forward one, so it's really cheap. It's only negative uh, 12, was it? Negative 12, so it's not a big deal on block. Uh, and on counter hit, on counter hit, they block it. Let me, <laughs> on counter hit. 
Nope, I forgot if you match his uh Damn it, charge. Let's try it again. On counter hit, it knocks back. In second six, was you don't know, that knocked back on normal hit. So it was a whole lot of shit going on at the wall. He would be like uh, this, size up this, they block, and then back sweep blow. It would be like, you don't know when to swing at Bob when your back is to the wall because of this fuck, because of this freaking move. It's just cheap. Uh, can't wait for Steve. If you're talking about me running through Steve, that's already on my YouTube. If you scroll down, there's a YouTube link there. I should probably... Uh, make an overlay on my stream when I do these, right? So I like link that stuff. Um, who's up next after Bob and Peen? Uh, I, I think I said I was gonna do. I said out. Oh, shit, I forgot who I said I was gonna do after Bob. I said I was gonna do a more complicated character. I think I said Lily. Did I ever try to do Feng? No, Feng's on the list. Uh, I think Lily's next. Lily's gonna be next. Uh, another thing about Bob is he has one of those uh, mid-stage juggle enders that spike and gives him a free reskilled hit in the end. What do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. Let me see if I remember this combo. Uh, okay, it's this. Okay, so this combo, for example, easy combo, right? Did he run up four three three plus four? You see how the I lost the combo on the last hit. The last hit is still guaranteed in that combo, so the actual damage of that juggle is 60 plus 11, 71 damage off of his hop kick. Reason being, that last hit after the spike is guaranteed, but it counts as a rescale. There's a couple of characters that have juggles that do this. I know Ling Xiaoyu has something. Uh, Gigas is definitely probably the, the best example because his juggle with the ground pounds, he does one, two, and he gets like a third one. That third one never combos properly, but it is guaranteed, and it's always 16 damage. That's why Gigas does so much damage. The launcher hurts, and the, the juggle ender hurts. Because uh, it gets reskilled in his juggle ender. Uh, oh yeah, Bob has a really good 12 frame punisher in this. A lot of range on that. It is a high though. And it is quite unsafe if it gets blocked, so don't mess it up. Alright, so uh, there's a lot more going on with Bob. One of the things they nerfed from Tag 2 is this cheap ass low. In Tekken 6, it did uh, this also. It did, when they blocked the first hit, it did that. They buffed it in Tekken uh, Tag 2 for God knows what reason, so that the first hit doesn't cause that stagger. So then it became, if Bob stops the first hit, he's very punishable. But then he has this second hit with counter hit properties. And it was absolute BS. Absolute, if I can make the second hit connect by itself. Absolute BS, dude. They took that shit away. <laughs> they took away the cheap Bob stuff. Now he's just like a very normal character, really. Uh, I've heard that his jab rate isn't as good, but I'm pretty sure it's still better than most. And remember, because he doesn't have forward one as a move, you can hold forward with his jabs. So, every character that does not have forward one as a move, you can hold forward with their jabs to add range without slowing the jabs down. Those of you that don't know that, that's a universal mechanic, pretty much. As long as the character does not have forward one as a move, you can hold forward and press one, and you'll add range to your jab. Sorry about Automata, I'm un unable to turn it off, because I don't know why. I tried to, and it doesn't let me. Uh, Lily isn't going to be a pain in the ass. Lily is going to be straightforward. Because I already have a general sense of the back turn moves. Alright. So now that I got the stuff I remember out the way. There's a lot of other good shit about Bob. You got some decent low pokes. You saw, uh, what is it? Two, one, three? Or one down four. One down four is still decent. Uh, down back three is still good. This is still good even though it's like risky. And of course he has a health suit which I've got into. So. Oh yeah, and size that one pursue is really cheap, but I'll get to that when I talk about wall stuff. So, Bob has a regular ass crouch dash. I've, you've been noticing I've been doing this wave dash the whole time. He does have a wave dash mix up, but I wouldn't get too obsessed with it. Just get used to doing crouch dash moves as fast as possible. Especially for this. This is like the big whiff punisher, the really big one. <laughs> but we're going to start with crouch dash one. Right? Really fast move. It's 13 frames. I don't know if you can make it a 13 frame punish. You probably can. I don't think you'd want to. But it's only negative two on block. It is a high, but it's only negative two on block. This is a really good move. Really good move. Look at that. You don't even see me doing a cross dash. You can input this like it's an electric almost. Right? Basically. 
on normal hit. If I don't mess it up like I'm doing it now, it knocks down on normal hit. 20 damage. On counter hit. Counter hit. It gets a uh, juggle. Now it does cause the instant uh, corkscrew, which means you cannot get a second corkscrew in the juggle. Now I don't know what the juggle would be, right? You'd have to look up like a actual Bob juggle guy to figure that out. But point being, whatever the juggle is, whatever the one, uh, don't look for. If you're new to tech or whatever, or you're just bad at execution, when you're looking for juggles, look for simple shit. Work your way up to the more complicated stuff later. But when you're in the heat of the match, use the thing that you know you're gonna connect. Don't go cr Don't go looking up the best damage option for every launcher. Just do something uh, uh, straightforward. Yeah. So whatever, what, whatever a Bob juggle this will tell you for a cross dash one counter hit would be, go with like the one that you, you're confident in. Don't don't obsess over adding one, two, three more damage to your juggle for something that's way harder to do. So cross dash one is a very 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 good move. I don't know how it tracks. Ooh, wow, looks good. I think it's right. Yeah, it is right. I remember this in the back of my brain. I used to fight the little of Tekken 6 that I played. My friend made Bob for that game, which was a fucking nightmare to fight against. So I remember this being sidestep right. So this doesn't have any natural tracking to the to Bob's left side. So here's where I talk about one of the benefits of wave dash and crouch dash. In Tekken, dashing movement of any sort in Tekken realigns your character. So making this move come out a little bit slower will help realign it. I think that's feels a little slower. See? So this is actually one of the things that makes Wave Dash really good. Many reasons. There's many things that make Wave Dash good. That's one of them. Because what essentially is going on when you Wave Dash is every time you do a cross dash in a Wave Dash, you're constantly realigning yourself. Constantly. So if people try to just do a raw sidestep out of that, you could just add a little extra movement. Or you can do it instantly. So it's all about timing, and the faster you do your wave dash, the more, the faster you realign. You feel me? What's going on, Slayer? Uh, what's going on, Milo? So that's just one of the things you gotta think about. That mo most people don't, from what I notice at least, most people, most people don't mention it when they talk about wave dash. They just talk about wave dash as a mix-up. Wave dash constantly realigns your character. Remember that. No matter which character you're using, if they have a wave dash, machine was included. That's what. That's why electric is so hard to sidestep. It's already naturally kind of hard to sidestep, right? But then wave dashing makes it even harder to sidestep. And this is basically Bob's electric, right? <laughs> Except he needs a counter here, so it's like Tekken, uh, Tekken Attack 2 Jin electric. It leaves him right in your face, right? Well, it pushes back if they block the tip, right? Yeah, it, cr it creates a little bit of space, so if they block the tip, you can even get a little bit of an easy backdash whiff punish probably, right? <clears throat> so crash dash one, really good move. Does not track to Bob's left side, though. No. That's one of those moves where you want to step toward the move. That breaks the rule, the visual rule. Next, we got Crouch Dash 2. So I mentioned earlier that this is going to be one of your really big boy whiff punishes. This is for when your opponent whiffs something really big. Um, I wouldn't say, like, you need to input this as fast as possible. I mean, you kind of do. But this is more or less like if you happen to already have been going for a Crouch Dash. Like, I I'm back here. I think they're going to whiff something now. So I'm going to go for a Crouch Dash. And then if they did something, it hit 2. Basically. Right? Think about it like you're confirming, uh, like you're confirming certain law in Street Fighter, long range crouching medium kicks to super, right? One of the ways to confirm them other than like inputting it so you're in a spacing where your opponent can walk into it. The other way to do it is just to hit the down, the down kick and visually confirm that they press something and then you, you know, you do the super motion. So it's the same thing like if you're doing a super motion in a 2D fighting game, but you don't press the punch or the kick in the end of the super motion unless they did something. 
Same thing here. You do a crouch dash. They didn't do anything. You don't have to do anything. You can cancel the crouch dash into a sidestep. Up. Oh, you can cancel it into a block. You know, you don't have to do anything. But if you crouch dash. Oh, they did something. You hit two. You get this big ass launcher, right? The launcher does 24 plus 5 damage. And that 5 damage in the end does not scale. Right? It's 100% still. Other, other options when you launch them. Next hit. 70%. Right? You see that? Four damage, seventy percent on that jab. For whatever reason, this one. Thank you for the follow, Marlon. This one gives you hundred percent on the first two hits, so and that goes to seventy percent. The old follow up and tag two was that, but there's no bound anymore, so now you have to adjust to whatever the other juggle would be now. I don't know what it would be, but the same hop kick juggle I was working probably works, right? Oops. Now I'm fucking up. Oh wow, it doesn't. I guess the way it launches makes it weird. Oh, no, I'm doing the wrong move. That's why. See, that totally does. All right, that's a little more for that one. Oops. I had it in my brain that I was playing Katarina for some reason. I think I've been, think I've been thinking about Katarina a lot lately. That's probably why. <laughs> that Markman tweet got me, think got me thinking a bit. Ugh, now I'm fucking up this struggle. Come on. I'm not a ball player. I'm, I'm not a ball player. <laughs> 69 plus 11 damage, right? 70, 80 damage. Just doing the same juggle as doing on hot kick off of that. You could get more than that, I'm sure. Uh, if the floor break is involved, this probably is still the, the go-to, right? Let's go to the floor break stage. By the way, guys, like always, feel free to ask questions, even if it's not Bob related. If I know it, I'll answer. And no, you don't have to sub or donate to ask a question. You could ask it either way. That's my water. Alright. So I'm assuming this floor breaks. Let's see. Oh man. Oh, down soon. Okay. Oh, the wall was there. Alright, so yeah. The thing about down two four is when they're head towards, it flips some feet towards. Uh so yeah, it breaks the floor. So for when floor breaks involved, you're definitely gonna want to do that unblockable right after. The thing is it's gonna have so much forward movement that you're not gonna get much more for wall carry. Unless your back is to the wall, right? Let's restart. Let's uh, switch positions. And let's uh, get to the wall. It's gonna load now to rebuild the floors. Excuse me. So now. Uh, see, I don't know what the follow up there would be. But you do down, down two, four. Uh, you can't go right into down, uh, down, uh, three, four after that, right? You have to do, like, back two? Oh, that shit just whiffed. Uh, yeah, I'm in Manhattan. Uh, it might be fun for to find, wait, what? Characters out, but, I, wait, what? Oh, uh, well, well, thank you. <laughs> I'm in Manhattan. I live near uh, China South Fair. Ah, oh, shit. Alright, so the timing on this is a little finicky. Uh, let's try back to down 3 4. And then, uh, and, and then whatever, right? Maybe down 2-4 to carry him to the wall. But then he's going to face splat on the wall, so it's going to fuck up the juggle, I'm sure. Face splat. Hey, yo. Well, whatever. Play around with that. I'm sure somebody has a good juggle. I'm only talking about the basic shit here. I'm not a Bob main. I'm just the dude that plays second, that's going through the whole cast so that I can learn. And I scream my process with you guys. So you can tell me I'm wrong. All 
All right, so Crash Dash 2 is very damaging, but now we get to the problem with Crash Dash 2. It's negative 23 on block. I think this used to push back, right? Well, whatever. Point being, it's always been super bad on block. I will say this is kind of like uh, Kazumi's Tiger Uppercut in that there are certain angles and certain whiff situations. For example, it kind of moves him off axis to the left. So if they block this shit at certain weird angles, you might be at an odd angle, but you're always going to get a punish. Uh, the thing about it on whiff is you kind of got to wait for him to land. Uh, but it does, much like Kazumi's Tiger Uppercut, it does go under mids sometimes. Now, as far as setting that up to show you guys, what mid can we use? Maybe that? Oh, 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 there you go, baby. That is definitely a mid, right? Yep, that's a mid. It goes under mids. It's one of those. So the mids that have good hitboxes are going to beat it. The ones that have not good hitboxes. <laughs> the, the kinds of mids that would lose to AOP without the AOP duck. Those are the kinds of mids that that move is going to beat. Tekken breaking its own rules. Tekken breaks its own rules all the time. And it's been doing it more and more ever since Tekken 6. Actually, ever since Lily was added in DR. It's been doing that way more often. You meant down forward 4, right? Forward 4 is a high homing move. Anyway, cross dash 2. I don't think it tracks. That's not down for cross dash 2. You see, if you were to sidestep it, trying to get a launch on it, it's like you gotta like wait for him to land, and then you're gonna be at an odd angle probably. Okay, seems to track to Bob's right side pretty well. So once again, you want to go to your right, just like for Crash Dash One. Same thing. All right, so we got that out of the way. Next, we got Cross Dash 3, Tech Jump Mid. Let's see. 16 frame startup. Oh, this is the one that has that punch follow-up, right? Yeah, it is. Um, is it two? Okay, so it has the two follow-up, and you can't delay it. You have to input it right after, pretty much. So there's no confirming here. There's definitely no confirming here. And I don't think you get any follow-up from just the mid. Nope. Um, so the thing about this move is the knee by itself is negative 14, so it's really bad. Nothing special on counter here. The punch is safe, but negative 9, but it's a high. And that definitely floor breaks. Maybe it might be good to floor break up the wall, but the damage isn't all that crazy. 14 to 16? Damage isn't all that crazy. Um, it is a natural combo, obviously, because it knocks him into the air. Yeah doesn't jail. So this is a move I would only use for juggles if you want that floor spike or to break the floor. But let's see how the knee tracks. Alright, so we finally have an option that covers his left side here. So that's another way to use it. It's a really risky read. I would recommend just realigning with your better options instead of using this to track to his left side too much. Ah, 
I think I delayed the input here a little bit. That's why it's hitting me. Yeah, I definitely delayed the input a little bit. It was super easy to sidestep as well. Uh, RIP bounce system. Yeah, cross test 3 2 was good in tag 2 because it led into a full combo. I did not know that. There you go. Uh, but the move is pretty washed up now. Yep, yep, yep. That's that's the problem with a lot of bound moves going into this game. They didn't do the best job, in my opinion, of repurposing them. You know, there's some moves that were made, designed to only be bounced, clearly, in tech in Tekken 6 and Tekken and Tag 2. And you can tell because they're, like, shit in the neutral situation. Trash on block. So you can tell they're designed to be, like, bound moves, pretty much. Or they don't combo or shit like that. Uh, in this game... They just like, you know, it, 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 this thing, what they should have did in my opinion, they should have made that high, like zero on block or something, right? But it's like negative nine, so it's like, why the fuck are you gonna use it? It doesn't even do a lot of damage, so if you want a ground spike with it, it's like, eh. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe for certain wall combos, he does have some crazy wall combos. But, uh, they don't evolve using that. <laughs> uh, maybe for wall, uh, wall combo, it's a floor break, is what I wanted to say. So yeah, that move was kind of whatever. I mean, at, at best, you have it as a cross dash option that tracks to his left side, right? That's about it. Since uh, cross dash one and cross dash two do not. Next, we got Hell Sweep. Cross dash four, one plus two. Oops. Four, one plus two. Okay. So the thing about characters with Hell Sweeps like this is you may have noticed that a lot of times, a lot of people get while standing four by accident. <sighs> The best way for me to describe this is if I were to type out the notation of this, it would be forward, neutral, down, and then uppercase down forward, D slash F, uppercase. What that means is hold down forward and then press four. That's how you avoid getting cross dash to while standing forward by accident. Hold the down forward. Hold it. And that's all a machine, it's not just Bob. If, you, if you're someone that is playing them or starting to play them and then you get this a lot when you don't mean to while standing forward, that's why. You're like letting go of the down forward like a, like a frame or two before you're pressing the four. That's really what's happening. So just hold the down forward and then press the four. So we got 33 damage. Um, this is one of those where depending on your spacing from the wall, you will get a wall combo, but not just that. Not just that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it might not wall carry as far as Kazuya's Hell Sweep does. I think Kazuya's Hell Sweep carries a lot further than this. So we're taking this to the wall, right? Uh, let's see, maybe. I'll just run up and do a down forward one. We'll, we'll know it's good there. Yeah, see? Alright, that was definitely good enough. I was just slow. Okay, that was too close. Too close. Okay, so it does. It, it does carry pretty far. <laughs> but anyway, not just that. That's not even like... That's important. So it's just like Kazuya's, right? The thing is... Also, balcony break, right? Although, in this case, since the low trips you and you're airborne, the 1 plus 2 is going to take the 70% scaling and the hit scaling. So, you're, the normal juggle I was doing is not going to work. Clearly, right? But you get the idea. Balcony break, you get a full combo. His health sweep high crushes? Oh, you mean forward one plus two. Oh, you mean the belly? The belly's always been kind of cheap. It's always been like a high crush. I don't know if it still is, actually. It's an armor move now. We know that. But the belly, yeah, because he, he ducks and then he throws his belly out there. Oh no, maybe it doesn't high crush as good as it used to. Let's 
Let's try a negative uh, three. Okay, there you go. See? So like at negative uh when, when I'm like when I'm at plus, the crush is a little better. Weird. Or maybe it's a spacing. Well whatever. Um This might be good actually. Yeah, so his hell sweep. High crushes! His hell sweep high crushes! Now, that does not mean that you should be using it the way I'm using it here to like counter a high. Do not do that, no. That just you gotta treat that like a bonus. His wave dash has a high crushing low option out of it. That's all. It's pretty fucked up. Unlike any other Mishima, any other Mishima's Hell Sweep does not high crush. His wall combo does hurt a lot. It looks way more buff than 25 damage, though. Are you talking about this? 26? Is that what you're referring to? Oh. Uh. If you're talking about this, well, the thing about this, though, is it's plus 8. <laughs> but it is plus 8 with a lot of pushback. You gotta use both of these lows. This is still a good low. And then the health sweep's another one. Don't just like use, oh, health sweep's more damage, so that's gonna be the long and the go towards. No. There's uses for this, and there's uses for health sweep. Sometimes you're gonna wanna do this. Probably when their back is right up against the wall, you're probably gonna wanna use this instead of health sweep. Because when their back is to the wall, this spacing that he creates by hitting them with that is not gonna be there. They're gonna be closer together. Plus, say, doesn't matter as much with this spacing. But when his back is to the wall and you're closer, plus eight lap matters a hell of a lot more. Of course. So anyway, so he has a, a high crush option that ducks mids, and he has a high crushing low option also. Pretty good if you ask me. Uh... And the first hit, if for, if, if for some reason you want to do the first hit by itself, it's negative one. <laughs> 60 damage though, hey. And the second hit is negative 17 on block. But the first hit does have a lot of range. And 25 by itself. Good damage. Now then, how does his health sweep track? Because I can't remember. Uh, the startup on this is 18 frames. Okay. Poor Bob can't launch his own shit. Negative 17. Bob can't launch that. But he can totally launch this shit, right? So it seems to track both sides. Oh, not walk, not walk though. But step, it seems to cover pretty well. All right, so if you're gonna walk, you gotta go to Bob's left. Oh shit, there it goes, my timing. Okay, so I, I did it a little slower after the jab than I should've. So that means I have to delay my sights up a little bit. That's the thing about this, when you try to like figure out how to sidestep shit during a match, you can't tell when people would do, well, not that anyone would do jab into a hell suit like this. But in general, it's hard to tell if it's your timing or if it's just the, the way the move tracks. It's difficult to tell. People get moves to track by accident all the time. Just because they fucked up their input and didn't do it as fast as possible. <laughs> they probably don't even realize they're doing it. Alright, so... You could go right for this. So it's basically like Jin. Much like Jin, you want to go to his right. Uh, sorry, to his left, to your right to beat out his cross dash options. All right, so there's one more thing I just remembered. From crouch dash, you could still do up forward moves. You could still do forward forward moves and you could still do while running moves. Up forward, up back or up, any of those moves. You can also do while standing from, from crouch dash, wave dash. You can do all of that, all of that. That's where the true mix up potential from crouch dash comes. So, for example, 
Cross dash is forward, down, down, towards, right? Forward, neutral, down, down, towards, like the lap mob. Let's see if I get a clean in right here. Uh, okay. There it is. That right there on the bottom right, that is cross dash, right? Forward, the gap is neutral, down, down, towards. That's a perfect cross dash. But you can input it like this as forward. When you do that, you're, you are buffering in at one forward input, right? So if I want to do cross dash into forward, forward, two, for example, I could input it like that and then press forward two right after, right? Oop. See, uh, it's sloppy looking, but it's looking, it's showing up as three inputs because I'm pressing the two too late. But still, it's the same concept. But mentally, you can still input it that way. Same thing applies for while running, right? I can do it better for wave dash. See? Forward, neutral, forward, neutral, forward plus three. <laughs> Although I'm getting the double forward because... See, that's what's happening. If you press the... If you hold the second forward a little bit and then press the two, it shows up as three out. Three? Three. <laughs> three arrows instead of two. That's all that, that... That's not me pressing forward a third time. Just the game shows it as weird. But trust me on that. Hey, thanks for the host, Grim. So anyway, that applies to while running and forward forward moves, right? See? Oop. Ah. A line. See? Ah. There it is. Jin and Devil Jin actually have a shortcut for, for those of you out there that play uh, Diablo Jim and Jim. You could input cross dash up forward three with them. And they get the slash kick of our running three. For Bob though, he had he just gets a hop kick, right? So you can totally do a wave dash to hop kick. You can totally do that. And then of course you can totally do wave dash to while standing. Now there's a uh, several ways to do this shortcut, this trick, right? Uh, my way is when you get to the down, the down forward part of your cross dash, input back plus whatever the button is. So for, for, for Bob while standing 2-1, I would input back plus 2 as if it's like a just frame. Right? It seems easier for Bob than most. As long as you're doing it after the down forward part, you're going to get a while standing. If you input it after the forward part, you're going to get a standing back too. So, what's up, Front Crush? Do you think Bob is a good character for a machine player? Yes. I don't know about jumping ship though. What the fuck, yeah. Machine was a better overall. What's up, Exodia Lover? Uh, that move is negative. I know it is Exodia Lover. I'm just talking about doing instant while standing. I wouldn't recommend it. If you're going to go for a mid, although hop kick is slower, much slower, it's still uh, usable. 20 frames. But you can totally do instant while standing. I don't think it's as useful as it is for Kazuya, who goes for Twin Pistons, which is 13 frames, and it's only like negative 12 or 13 or some shit on block. It's not like death on block like Bob's launcher is. So this is just something you can do with every machine character. Do you have to attack back or hold it? I'm hold, uh, hold it, hold it. I'm holding it. Oh, now I can't do it all of a sudden. Ugh. There you go. Uh, I think if you're a Mishima player, Bob is easier to pick up to use the wave dash stuff, but his wave dash options aren't on the level of, uh, of a Kazuya or a Double Jin. He has, like, variations, right? This is pretty much, this is kind of like Double Jin's Demon Paul, right? Forward, forward, two. But it's not as good, in my opinion. But it's still good. It's not a bad move. Forward, forward, two is still a good move. It just doesn't have that range. Like, Devil Jin and Jin, they stick out their arms super far. Bob just throws himself forward with that shit. Uh, what Bob does get is a lot more high crushing opportunities. Because this is an actual high crush. As is that. And, of course, as is uh, Cross Dash 2. I just want to wave. Of course you just want to wave Dash. Why else would you ask that? Um, so, anyway, yeah. That's that. Oh, they got that out of the way. You got cross dash down four. Sorry, cross dash one plus two. 
which as uh, was mentioned earlier in the chat, this is a high crush and you can charge this. So without charge is 25 damage. Negative 10 on block. With charge, it's uh, negative seven on block, pushes back. Pushes back a little more, rather. It does push back without it also. Just not as much. And with the charge, it's 35 damage. Also, that kind of knockback. Can you check that? No, you can't. What happens if you hold back? Ah. So the thing about that kind of knockback is when you uh, take walls into consideration, things get weird. There are times where you're going to get guaranteed follow-ups. For example, that. That actually beat out Wake Up Kick. I'm hoping the AI is doing it as fast as possible. Ah, uh, I need to add a little more range. There we go. So. I wonder if that's guaranteed. All right, let me record it on myself. Damn it! It might not be. Yeah, see. So when the walls are involved, you could probably get something for free. If it is guaranteed mid-stage, the timing is very strict. Well, since this is the last crouch dash move, I'll just stay with the wall stage for now. Do it like instant. There you go. So it's a very specific spacing, but that was clearly guaranteed. But a little bit closer, and you got a wall splat, right? Well, oh, not a full one though. What about if he were to? Uh, Four two down three plus four is guaranteed. It's all about for the charge cost that's one. Oh. That was a low wall hit, but So it's a very specific timing, but I'm sure you can make that work. Very specific timing and spacing. No, oh, damn it. I have a I've always had an issue on arcade stick. On anything really. Pressing two buttons together. Because my fingers are shaped weird, my index finger's crooked. 
Which sucks when you're a Marduk main. I never wanted to use button binding though, because I played uh, Tekken 5 and DR and RK. You couldn't button bind. You could plug in your control, but you couldn't button bind. So I would often get while standing 1 2, or VTS 1 2, which is the same thing, instead of tackle. It's a real pain in the ass. Alright, well, the spacing is fucking weird. Raw forward forward still? Oh, you talk. Oh, I know what you talking about. Off of this? Is that what you talking about? Off of that flip? I got destroyed by Decent Bob the other day. Looks like back at uh, combos, like goddamn. Alright, that's if they don't hold back, though. Because they can hold back off of that. That knockdown, right? Unless I'm wrong. Oh, man. Okay, so I assume that they could hold back because the juggle, right? All right. That's what would happen in the juggle. Okay, so that's guaranteed. All right, that's cool. That's really cool, actually. Because <laughs> if you were to do that in the juggle, they could hold back to get up from that, right? Like, see? Whenever I see that knockdown, my brain has been programmed to think, oh, they could just hold back. But then I forget when it's a raw attack that does that, you lose the ability to hold back. There's a couple of moves that do that, like Kazumi and Heihachi's uh, Twin Pistons. Also, uh, you might be able to get another hit there depending on the space. Maybe not. It's a bit too far. Yeah, oh man. It looks finicky. I feel like if you were at an angle. Oh man, uh, if you hit an angle, you could make that work, maybe? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> that would be sick, though, right? Alright. So that's the cross dash options. Let's look at cross dash 1 foot 2's track, and I don't think it has really any, but. to his left side. Much better option than cross dash 3. Much better option. Only negative 10, no launch. And you can... It crushes highs. And you can charge it. And 25 is a nice chunk of damage. And does more than 25 if you charge it. Oop. So if you want some natural... 35. If you want some natural tracking to his uh, left side, that's better. Yeah, you can video games. What's up? You just you must have just joined because I said that already. <laughs> so that's the last of his crouch dash options. Uh, let's go through grabs. Oh, we should look at this stuff too, just in case, right? Oh boy, so the only thing no worth noting about this 10 hit is the first uh, two hits, what's it, three hits? Oh, not, not this one, the next 10 hit, this 10 hit, the first three hits there. The 10 hit, that's not an actual 10 hit. The first three hits are good for a certain wall combo. So he has a low on the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh hit. Alright, there you go. Go right to a high low. High high or high low. So you can just duck after the first hit. Alright, well this is the one that's important because as a wall combo you use the first three hits. I'll go back into that later. Quarter deck. Alright. That looks like it might give some OK, especially if he has a lot of range. This positioning looks decent for this too. Alright, so I go through this every time I go through the throws. If you look here, you'll see these are the same throw, but this one shows you they can hold forward. Why is it doing that? Because they finally, back in I think Tekken 6, decided to add this to the move. This is a separate thing, because it is. It's slower. A regular throw without holding forward is 12 frames. Holding forward is 15 frames. 
but holding forward gives you tracking to both sides. So you exchange speed for more range and tracking. But they are still the same throw, and breaking them is exactly the same. Attack on 7, you can press either punch to break these. We're still going to try to look at the Oki here, though. How do you test Oki on throws? Well, the first thing you want to test is find something that beats out both wake-up kicks. At least one option that's either a mid or a low. That's step one. Nobody's able to do the text off of the throws, off of most throws. So, I didn't know that. Well, now you know. And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> So down two, down two is, is what I think is gonna be my go-to here. Oop, that's not down two, that's crouch jab. <laughs> yeah, down two looks good. So that's gonna be a counter hit, right? I think the low is slower. Yeah, so I'm just mashing it out. So then it becomes, what happens if he holds back? Now the thing about this is, this, this option right here that says wake up backward in parentheses, what it's doing here, what the game is doing as an input is it's just tapping back and then letting this thing go to neutral, the pad, whatever, the input go to neutral. If you record this on yourself and you do this yourself when you keep holding back, you actually create more space. How did I discover this? When I went through Shaheen, he was one of the earliest characters I went through. I went through his move list, his command grab, when he used this as the back wake up option, his like back four or back three, whatever that big ass mid kick that hits grounded is, it actually hits them doing this. But if you record it on yourself and you keep holding back, you actually make that kick whiff. So this is the one super duper unreliable option. So now I'm going to record him doing a grab to me. Wait, I didn't do that though. I did one plus three, right? Okay, it was one plus three I did. Ah, do down two, asshole. Let me mash, bro. Okay. That's that. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. If I hold back. Oh, the camera fucked me up. Hold back. Ah! See? Motherfucker. Come on, man. I bet you'll show me hitting him. Let's see. Okay, no, I don't. At the very least, it didn't work there. All right, so holding back, he's out of your range for basically his longest range mid without you having to dash forward. So then it becomes, can he do a delayed forward forward two to still reach him? If not, then you're going to be whiffing your Oki if he holds back, which most people are going to do. They're either going to hold back or stay on the floor and side roll. Let's go with the low because that's the dangerous one. I could have did that faster. Nope. Alright. So the Oki on this is not that great. Because what's going to happen is... Yeah, you'll have lows that can reach him. You'll even have mids that can reach him on wake-up kicks. Which doesn't mean the Oki is bad. Like, like bad per se. But it's not great. What's going to happen is if they hold back, you're going to whiff that stuff. And depending on what you whiff, they're going to be able to whiff punish you. So then the question becomes, if I were to go with, let's say, down to... Let's go with down to one. And if I were to hold back, what would happen? Will I have to block the second hit or will it whiff? Ah, yes. Alright, so the second hit keeps you covered. The dangerous thing about swinging at somebody here and whiffing over their body is that positioning gives them the launch or low, right? And that's a punish, so he definitely recovers too slow. Maybe you're going to want to use down 2-4 because of that. Let's see what happens. He still lands in front of the feet. 
That's unfortunate. If you were able to jump over the opponent, then whiffing that wouldn't be a big deal. So once again, his Oki is kind of whatever. Yeah, but back four is going to whiff. I'm positive. Oh, you mean, I think you meant back three. You meant back three, didn't you? Right, I'm sure it's gonna beat on Waco kicks, right? And then if I stay down, it'll probably beat me, right? Okay, let's go mid. Right, and then I side roll. Let's see why it's my side roll. Oh, good for a side roll down, side roll up. Oh, okay, now let me hold back. Let's see what happens. Punish. Oops, I was breaking the boxes because I was buffering. Punish. Now, the thing about this is, you could probably, 99% of the time, still get away with whiffing a back three, even if they get up back. They're probably not going to punish you. Probably not. But that window is there. Now, for me, if I know that, I'm probably not going to do that too much. I may... But I'll, that will always be in the back of my mind. Because the thing is, you can go on the assumption that they're going to be ignorant to that and not, you know. Things, even if they are ignorant to that, all they have to do is just swing with something that has range and they're going to hit you probably, right? <laughs> if only Bob's that's were a little longer. If only he were Shaheen. Uh, could you check if Don 1 is guaranteed after... Oh, uh, I don't think... Did I do that last time? I thought I did that. No? <laughs> you wish you wish you got guaranteed stuff after that now back three seems good but if I hold what happens if I hold back okay now there I get up I get up slow enough that he recovers in time for me to not whip with punish him. See, no punish. What about uh, Cracker Jacker? Oh, Cracker Jacker. Doesn't work. So I get up slow enough that, you know. Oh, yeah. You said down. Oh, uh, that reaches. Okay, that's what I was testing. Now. But if I try to dash up down one. I got to dash up. He recovers weird off of that. Nope, oh, alright. Yeah, no good. Bob with no guaranteed Oki, huh? Well, I mean, you know, most characters don't have guaranteed Oki, so... Bob has guaranteed stuff off of a lot of moves. I talked about this last two times. I forget which one's at the moment, though, right? There was some... Like this, that gave him a free back three, didn't it? Yeah, it's homie move. Look at that. I think this one you wanted to delay it so it scaled, so it reset the scaling, right? But it was still guaranteed. Is that what happened with this? Yeah, I think that was the case with this. You wanted to delay it to get two more damage, but it's still guaranteed. The same thing with some other knockdown. Also, I tested, because of that knockdown, I already tested it with the wall to my right. He doesn't get anything. Most of his knockdowns, he gets a back, like those weird side knockdowns. He gets a back three off of most of them. You'd be surprised. All right, so we're talking about the one throw, right? So the one throw, uh, if they hold back, you got to chase them down. You got to chase them down. But the problem with the risk of chasing them down is you're dashing up to them when the wake up low kick can uh, launch you on normal hit with a clean hit. So that's what makes the Oki suspect to me. Alright, so now they got that out of the way. That's just a regular throw. Who really gives a shit, right? Still gonna find out, though. Let's see what's up with this throw, right? We gotta wake up low kick here. So, once again, I'm gonna go with down... This one, he's face up. So, he loses wake up low normal hit being a launcher. So, we could take bigger risks here. <clears throat> uh, as long as you don't get counter hit by wake up low kick, your option is good. 
So even something as simple as that, as the low option. Down back three, looking good. What about mid? Ah, oh, the mid is faster. So the mid loses to the to the mid. 15, 20. That makes sense. Uh, his lows are already slow. Oh wow, that's 19. That looks that does that just look so slow. You know why it looks so slow to me? Cause after it's active, he does that full on animation. It's actually faster than that. Go figure, right? All right. The problem with doing this as your low option is you're gonna get destroyed if they get up and block it. So I would not recommend that either. And then you got, of course, the mid option that hits grounded. It's 18 frames. So that interrupts too. So that one is pretty good here. Now then. If you're not used to the characters, throw recovery. That's why I'm trying to mash. That looked a little slow. That looked good. All right, I held back. All right, holding back doesn't save you. So you have to block this. What happens if you go side row? All right. See, chop still has uses. All right, side roll in either direction, loses. Of course, you can just stand block this. Yeah, tapping up still blocks too, good. All right, so we got a good mid option here. And then it beats out both. Wake up, right? yeah. And of course, the counter hit, he gets another one for free. Another top. Or a back three. So now, uh, down back three was the low that I did, right? All right. And then the mid beat it out, right? Oh, no, it doesn't. Much better Oki off of this. And if I hold back, do I escape the low? Yeah, because of the angle he leaves you at. You can't hold back to create a ton of space. So you have to get up and block. And you don't have enough frames to low parry. Hey, thanks for the follow, da Daimler. Daimler. So you have to guess. Uh, thanks for checking. No problem. I think if you dash up, then your follow can get a roll. Uh, just mix up back three with the armor move. Like the scrub that I, <laughs> like the scrub that I have. I mean, go with what, what you know works. Test your shit. Just test your shit. That's all you gotta do. Just test your shit. You know, I, I, I need to take my own advice. I always, in, in past games, I needed to take my own advice now because I would always just play based on assumptions and shit. Like, oh, for Oki, this should work. I never really tested my Oki. Now I'm doing it for all characters except my own because he's not in the fucking game. Give me Marduk, damn it. Give me Marduk. All right, so we got a legit 50-50 for his. Uh, let's test side roll here, actually. Oh, I'm mashing the wrong button. All right. Yeah, we got legit 50-50 here. Attack on some extra damage. 13 damage from the low, nice. Now sure, you can do this instead as your mid to hit grounded, but negative 15 on block, negative 11 on block. 
doesn't force crouch, by the way, and he recovers crouching. So, like I said, they'll get what a cross jab. You know, <laughs> they're not gonna get much for blocking the chop. Uh, all right, so that's those two throws. Uh, I don't. I tend to not really look at side throw Oki, cause how well, that's definitely not gonna give you any Oki. At best, this may give you a, uh, something new when your back is near the wall. Speaking of that, uh, switch sides. Doesn't switch sides. I guess the camera might make it switch sides, but hmm. but physically, his back will be near the wall still. Doesn't switch sides, but it does turn. So you could use this to get away from the wall if they if they break it. And that does not, but it creates a lot of space. So both of his throws could, while they don't all right switch sides on break, they could help you get away from the wall in other ways. They would make it so you're with this space, and your opponent would have to approach you with something to uh, keep up pressure. But if they try to like commit to a dash up button, you can swing also. But keep in mind, you'd be swinging with your back to the wall, so they can also just dash up stop, and then oh, he swung, and then ba ba, right? <laughs> so that's just you know, it's not heavily in your favor per se, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Oh, it hits you with his ass. He told, oh no, I see what he did. He did the fucking kick, the back kick. Yeah, Jackie from Russia Fighter has a pretty good grab. He holds your head like a DDT, and then he kicks backwards like that into your face. And that's way cooler than this. This you can hardly even notice it's happening. All right, Sabo Hong, what else you got here? Back throw. Oh, this is one of the worst looking back throws in the game. Yeah, that shit's trash. What is that shit? <laughs> it's like he's trying to throw you to somebody, but nobody's there. <laughs> That's just trash. Alright. Fuck those throws. Alright, we have his jungle starting throw. Not much to, not, not much to say here. There's no Oki to check because you get a jungle. As far as what the best jungle would be, I don't know. Pick up a uh, combo thing. You go right to forward four. For one. Or you could go for the head. So the thing about this is you lose the 100% uh, damage scaling. Throw, if you go right into a jungle, is zero damage, but that's still gonna take up the 100% damage scaling. Your first hit while they're in the air is still gonna do 70. That's what makes the jungles relatively weak on this. I think forward four is the way to go, because anything else you have to like time. Forward four, you don't really have to time, you just mash it out, and then you go to whatever. So that's probably the way to go. All right, so on break. What does this look like on break? Why am I forgetting where the... Oh, okay. G generic break animation, so nothing really to... Should I test... Uh, fra I feel like for this... Oh, sorry. For this, I should test frame data, because you're right in each other's faces. Right? Hopefully that worked. Oh man, the spacing. Okay, so he's definitely recovering slower than me. Uh, 13 frame. So negative six. Unless the jab isn't coming out as fast as possible. Negative six. I miss Virtual Fighter too. Give me Lei Wulong. You should check what happens on throw break. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got me there. <laughs> I did, I did. Alright, um. So, negative six. Maybe negative five if I'm a little slow, but still negative. Pretty heavy on a negative. But hey, you can always just do that after it's broken. Or down forward two if they mash, uh. I'm sure if they mash, uh. Jabs that, that will beat them. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> uh, 
How about this? Uh, where the fuck is it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Negative six is probably right. Fully taking my show, that kind of stuff, right? And then we have this throw. This is only for the wall. You can use it mid stage, but like, why? So this is out of his uh, crouch dash, right? Because it's full. You could do it from crouch dash, but it's a full crouch grab. See? Now you are at plus, but like the space is crazy. Think about this though. though. It is it wall splats, and you got a full wall combo. Uh, I'm doing his old wall combo. I know he has a much better one now. Guaranteed one, right? I think that's the guaranteed one, right? Try to do this fancy shit. We're just testing. Oh, I got a brain fart there. I forgot the. Uh... Oh, wrong one. Yeah, that is guaranteed. 55 plus 16, right? That was 55? Oh my god, down back two, man. Yeah, so 66 damage. Uh... Oh, whoops. Yeah, you're right. Six damage. That's a lot of damage. It's like 70, what, 70 something? Oh, wrong one. <sighs> 65, 75, 70. Oh my god, my brain. My brain is melting. Uh, 81 damage. 81 damage, right? <laughs> Wait, 55. <laughs> My brain is fried. I just graduated from college. My brain is fried, right? 55, 65, 75, 80, 81. 81 damage, okay. Uh, we got, we got. <laughs> 81 damage off of a grab. So if they're shitty at, at throw breaking at the wall, you can make them hurt for it. Uh, 35. 30, 32. This is way harder to do it off, but you can still do it. Yeah, 
10 more damage. Ooh. 91 damage. 91 damage. Thank you, Rojo. 91 damage off of our on axis cracker jacker. That's a risky one, obviously. So the thing about that wall combo is, for those of you that don't know the inputs, that's the down back two to refloat. Side note about down back two, 14 frame startup. If you block Eddie's back three, three, and you do this as fast as possible, it will float him for a juggle. As long as you do it as fast as possible, not one frame delay, because it's negative 14. Um, so you like, for a Cracker Jacker, you have to, Backdash, input that at the perfect time. If you're too late, he's just gonna fall further. If you're too early, he's gonna like float into the wall too fast and you'll be unable to do the combo. So after you get the reflow, it's up forward two, three, three plus four, and then down three plus four. So the thing about up forward two, three, three plus four is that last kick in the end does that little like bounce on the floor, like Leo's uh, jumping fucking grounded hitting kick or Kazumi's fly three kick. If it's upon a ground and they bounce on the floor, that gives you guaranteed follow-ups that are quick at least. And that's a pretty quick guaranteed follow-up at 15, damn, uh, 15 frames. Uh, this in general, if they're on the floor in front of you with the wall to their back, you're gonna get both hits guaranteed. It's gonna typically do 24 damage, I believe. What about their face down? Same thing. Still get it. Good. No matter what position. You're going to get it. All right, so uh, that's pretty much all of his throws, right? So uh, that's kind of why I was going right into the wall stuff. Yeah, that's all his throws. So his command grabs, we don't care about the Oki. That's a wall combo command grab. That's going to be your mid-stage command grab because it gives you a full juggle. The end. That's the end of the story. You could do forward forward uh, one plus two out of crouch dash, wave dash, the same way I showed you how before. You could do both of them out of wave dash, obviously, right? I did that before, but... Um, Mid stage, if you're pressuring and you want to go for a command grab, you can totally do that shit. So whatever, right? So we got that out of the way. Two throw gives decent Oki, one throw not so much. If you're not careful with the one throw, you're going to eat a lot of wake up low launchers. And that's bad news. Wall. Yes. All right. So let's talk about what's really cheap at the wall here, because Bob is one of those characters that's really good at the wall. He always has been, and he still is. So I talked earlier about some of these options. This is pretty much the space you want to be at when they're back to the wall, because forward two, like the tip of forward two, let's say, pretty much that range. They do anything. Typically, as far as whiff punishment goes at the wall, as long as they're recovering standing, whatever they whiff, which is probably going to be the case of their backs to the wall, this is going to be your go-to for wall splat. Forward, forward two, four. Uh, sorry, forward two, three, because that's a lot of range. Uh, if you want something slower that hits mid, Cracker Jacker, the uh, super unsafe one, that's negative 17, launch punishable by anybody not named Bob, pretty much. <laughs> Bob might have the slowest launching in the game from standing. I think he does. Steve has 17 frames, I think, with, what is it, back two? I think that's 17 frames. Bob gets it at 18. So Bob might have the worst, uh, the slowest launch from standing in the game on normal hit. Well, whatever. If you want the safe on block option, you get that, but they can duck that. You cannot hit confirm, but you might be able to whiff confirm. Like, if you input up forward, and you see them whiff something, right after your input, you can probably throw out the second hit and get it in time. Uh, but in general, the cool thing about, like, the mid option, when their back is to the wall, it becomes a, basically a combo starter for the wall combo. So, them ducking the high is riskier. 
So it's like a big risk game you're playing with Bob here, but you can tell you that. Of course, the armor belly flop, only negative 13 on block. It's armored now, so that's cool. Great option. And then back sweep blows, great, right? These are pretty much all the unsafe stuff I'm going through right now. That's great too, even though it's negative 15 on block. Just make sure it's like for a whiff or a bad input of some sort. Um, what else is good? I don't know about that. Cross dash one is good because it pushes you back. He kind of always had this. It's negative two, but look at this. I'm outside of my own jab range pretty much, right? So you can pretty much do something like this, back dash, or this, sidestep. And of course, when you think about sidestep, one plus two, amazing fucking move, especially at the wall. This shit is cheap, cheap, cheap. The thing about this move is the way he sidestep determines which arm he uses. If I sidestep to my right, I swing with my left. If I sidestep to my left, I swing with my right. So that kind of gives it this weird evasive property. It's almost like a, a sidestep and a like half a sidestep when he does the move. It's very weird. Super duper evasive. If you watch the Tekken 6 Evo and watch Core, who won the uh, Tekken 6 Evo with Bob, you watch him use this move, you'll see this shit just like... He barely sidesteps. He was right into it. Like, up neutral, one plus two, or down neutral, up one plus two, right away, like instantly. Bah! It evades so fucking much. And it's only negative five on block. So if they block it, you can kind of do it again. But jabs will still, like, hit you if you're not careful. But even then, you know what beach jabs when they block this? Other than ducking? Fucking back swing blow. And in Tekken 6, that wall splatted on normal hit. Back swing blow is still a solid option. It's still a solid option. It is unsafe, but it's still a solid option. But do use it as like a last ditch effort. Like, don't just like automatically assume. You don't necessarily need a read either, but don't just automatically assume up front that they're gonna swing. It's all good shit. Uh, as far as lows go, this is much better here, because like I said before, you're going to get plus 8, and he's right in front of your face. When you're there at negative 8, they shouldn't be fucking moving at all. No movement. Don't move. You should be stopping them from moving, because then you can throw shit like this that's going to wall splat, and it'll hit them from moving. Right? I'll show you that right now. If I put him to stand guard, and I put him to sidestep, any direction, right? Can't move. Can't move. Can't move. Two plus. Uh, it forces crouch. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Really? Oh, it forces crouch. They catch that? <laughs> I didn't even know that. That's better than I thought. Shit. Better than I thought. All right. So, never mind, you take jabs, even though it's negative five, at negative five, you typically cannot sidestep jabs, but they can't jab. They can cross jab, but I don't know how to, I don't know if cross jab follows the same rule. Let's uh, try this. Step up. You, if I were to swing at him to try to stop him from side stepping, I have to cross jab in the direction. My right cross jab will hit him if he goes to my right. My left will probably hit him if he goes, if he goes to my left. Right. Jackers from while standing anywhere, right? So it's not like he doesn't have anything, but yeah. So 
But, like, the fast options, your wall standing fours and shit like that will pretty much lose to that shit. That shit's cheap. Still good. Still a good move. And then you're at an angle here, so you could probably do that sidewalk carry shit, right? How do you do that? Okay. I don't know why I forgot that. Alright, so. I would rather it re-splat though. Might be an angle where you can get to some resplat. I'd rather resplat than carry off the wall. Maybe just the first two hits. Uh, yeah, maybe just the first two hits. Well, we're getting. I feel like I'm getting too advanced. This is like for people who main Bob and want to do the craziest most optimized stuff but just keep in mind that if you do connect with a side step one pursuit at the wall you're going to be at that weird angle where you're going to be able to do weird shit like that so if you want to explore or look up uh those specific wall combo guides where i'm sure or combo videos that i'm sure will show all that stuff off you have that option uh hell sweep i don't think it's particularly useful at the wall outside of maybe some specific setups if i already guess Nah, you can't even do that The thing about this kind of like thing is sometimes, yeah, uh, maybe you can get it, but uh, I don't know about that. I mean, the cross, not the, the cross up. Some characters get a cross up. Bob doesn't seem to get it. Maybe because he's too fat. Sorry, Samuel Hung. You don't get it. Um, Am I forgetting any big stuff at the wall? So back 4-4, four, four, I mentioned that one already earlier. Wait, what? That's not a natural combo? Why didn't I think that was a natural combo? Nobody said anything? <laughs> Fuck! Why didn't I think that was a natural combo? It looks like something that should be a natural combo, right? I'm not crazy. Whatever, it's not. So, uh, can we find something else here? Um, damn, that sucks. That's guaranteed there. Oh, I forgot about that. Ugh. You know why I thought that was natural combo? Because in that string it is. <laughs> See? I guess that's why I assumed that, and I got complete. I, I went over this move earlier in the earlier parts, and I just forgot, I guess. Uh, we don't have another good fast mid, so a wall splat with? Well, we got some good ones, but they're all in safe. I was hoping for something that, even if it's mid high, I guess it would be that, right? 
got that for a lot of range. See? And that is a natural combo too. You may not get the down back too, but would you? You do, okay. But you, you don't get you know spacing to uh, allow yourself to recover in time for the 10 hit. So you might just get yeah, you might just get go have to go right into the 10 hit. All the CD moves are too slow, right? Well, you have to input crouch dash. I mean, they're fine. They're usable at the wall. I mentioned this already. This is crouch dash one's great at the wall. So crouch dash one plus two, sure. You can totally use that. I've seen it used. You can charge it too to make it safe. And if you charge it, you definitely get that. 84, uh, 86 damage. Even if you don't charge it. Seventy-six damage. If you want to be crazy, you can do that. I wouldn't recommend that either. Though. Cross dash three wall splats. So yeah, I mean, uh, forward forward two, of course. Forward forward two, of course. Same thing from back here. Forward forward two. Splat into that full combo. Might have to go right into the old shit. No, not that. Why am I jumping? It's because the angle I have to stick at. Damn, even that is weird and finicky to land here. <sighs> uh, that gives him a back three. That gives him that mid stage two, if I recall right. I think of anything else worth using. There might be like one thing I'm forgetting, but I think I got most of them, right? So sidestep two is a big one. Back swing blow, look for forward two, three off of whiffs. The cracker jacker variants. A four one plus two, one plus two, a four one plus two, four. Uh, belly flop. I mean, back here could do it, but it's super unsafe. What's going on? My name is Jeff. While standing too, nah. Not at the wall. I wouldn't recommend while standing too. I don't need to get anything guaranteed off of that. He recovers too slow though. Yeah, nah, I think he recovers too slow for that. While standing one plus two is about landing a counter hit. So yeah, that's pretty much everything, right? Forward forward two. And of course, for low, down back, this uh, this low becomes more valuable with balcony break. Health sweep becomes more valuable. That breaks balcony for a full juggle. So that's that, right? I'm just kind of pressing shit now to see what comes out. And then if they're on the ground, this is really nasty for Oki if they don't if they stay on the ground. It is negative 15 though if they get up and block it, so be careful with that. The homie move still gives that. 
You don't get that though. <laughs> yeah, um, oh yeah, you can also with punch with down 2-4. That is only 15 frames, so it's 3 frames slower than forward 2, but it's a mid option. Yeah, I think I got everything covered there. <laughs> <laughs> 